Okay, so continuing with our discussion. Now that we've learned that the firm has to recognize a factory profit, which is the gain that the firm has made by setting up the manufacturing unit, it also requires us to calculate the transfer price, which is the market price of these goods. All right, now the issue arises over here. If you recognize your cost of production at the transfer price, it would also require us to value your opening inventory and closing inventory of finished goods at the transfer price. We cannot go along with having the cost of production at the transfer price, but inventories at the cost price. So the firm will also have to make an adjustment over here where it would have to convert its inventories to their market values or the transfer price. Now, when we recognize inventory at the transfer price, it essentially goes against the prudence concept and the realization concept. So the prudence concept explained us that profits should always be understated as opposed to being overstated. And the realization concept also states that you should only recognize a revenue when it has been realized. Now, when we convert our inventories at the transfer price, so an inventory implies an unsold unit. These are goods which have not been sold as yet but we are already valuing them at the transfer price or the market price, which includes an element of profit. So in this video, our focus is to adjust this unrealized profit. So I'll call this profit, which is included in this inventory to be the unrealized profit. All right, so if we talk about the unrealized profit, the unrealized profit is the element that is included in your opening and closing inventory, which is the profit that has not been realized as yet. So a firm cannot realize the profit until the unit has been sold. So our job over here is to adjust and calculate the amount of unrealized profit in the inventory, which can be adjusted later. Because when we record inventory in the statement of financial position, we know that inventory should always be valued as per the cost. So to calculate the unrealized profit, you guys should know this equation. So we'll take the inventory of finished goods at the transfer price and we'll multiply it with the markup percentage upon 100 plus markup. I will obviously explain this later, but this is one way how we can calculate the element of unrealized profit included in your inventories. All right, so I'll come back to this, but let's first understand the concept of unrealized profit that will be included in your inventory. So if we take a look at this example, right? So if I can say we have opening inventory of $10,000 at cost and closing inventory of $12,000 at cost. Again, I'm, I'm discussing my finished goods. Now I cannot take this inventory at cost to the income statement because I've already valued my cost of production at the transfer price. And let's say the markup is still 20%. So what needs to be adjusted is these inventories will be converted to the transfer price. Now, how will we go about that? So if I take my opening inventory, the cost is 10,000. I can add a 20% markup to arrive at the transfer price. Remember the transfer price will be cost plus profit which will be 2000 and we can find the transfer price for opening inventory to be 12,000. Now this opening inventory will be recorded at 12,000 in the income statement. The same logic can be applied to closing inventory, which will be 12,000 plus 20% of this cost, which is 2400. And we can find the transfer price to be 14,400. Now these figures will go to the income statement. Now the issue arises over here we have essentially included an element of profit into these inventories. This 2000 and 2400 represents the unrealized profit. All right, so this profit is included in your inventory, which would also require an adjustment by the firm. All right, so now how do you adjust about it? So we can say that if your unrealized profit can either increase or decrease, I mean, we have to compare the unrealized profit included in your opening inventory and the unrealized profit included in your closing inventory. Now, something back from AS level, we all should remember our closing inventory is directly related to profit. So if your closing inventory will increase, your profit will also increase. Opening inventory is inversely related into profit. 
right? So now what we can say is if there is an increase in unrealized profit, which means that your closing inventory unrealized profit is greater than opening inventory, which in our example, 2400 worth of unrealized profit is included in your closing inventory and 2000 worth of unrealized profit is included in your opening inventory. So we can say this is an increase in unrealized profit worth 400, which is the difference between 2400 and 2000. And since this profit has been overstated, we need to decrease our profit, which is why we will debit our income statement to treat it as an expense and we will credit the provision for unrealized profit. So we will create a separate account, which I will explain later in this video that will be maintained to adjust this profit with the amount of increase. Similarly, if the situation was a decrease in unrealized profit, right? So if we had a decrease in unrealized profit, I would have entered it as an income or a gain since your profit would have been understated in that scenario. So as a result, we will credit our income statement with this gain and we will debit the provision for unrealized profit account with the amount of decrease. All right. So now the important concept over here is that inventories should always be valued at cost in the statement of financial position. Any element of profit has to be excluded, has to be removed from these inventories. And our job over here is to create a provision for unrealized profit account that will eliminate or remove any element of factory profit that is included in these inventories, but has not been realized by the firm as yet. And this is also stated as per IS2, which explains that inventory should be valued at lower of cost or net realizable value. And we should always ensure that your assets and profits are always understated. Okay, now let's take a scenario where inventories are given already at the transfer price, which can happen in any question. And we need to calculate the amount of unrealized profit. So let's take a look at this example. Okay, now in this example, I've given you the opening inventory of finished goods, which is already at the transfer price of the market value and it already includes an element of unrealized profit. The closing inventory at transfer price is 300,000 and still our factory profit or markup is 20%. Now the question is this, how do you calculate the amount of unrealized profit which is included in it? So let me show you how to calculate the unrealized profit in this situation. So let me first remove this. All right. Okay, so as explained earlier in this video, we can use this equation. We can take inventory of finished goods at the transfer price and we can multiply it by the markup upon 100 plus markup. So if opening inventory is worth 240,000 at the transfer price, I can multiply it by the markup, which is 20 upon 100 plus 20, which is 120. This means the opening unrealized profit turns out to be 40,000 the same I can apply to closing, which would be 300,000 times 20 upon 120. And we can find the unrealized profit in your opening and closing like this 40,000 and 50,000. Now, another way how we could solve this about is we can write that the transfer price is worth 240,000, which includes cost that can be written as X and factory profit to be 20% of this X. Remember the markup is applied to cost. So we can say 240,000 is X plus 0.2 X, which is 1.2 X. So we can find the cost to be 200,000. So out of 240,000, if 200,000 is the cost, we can arrive at the unrealized profit or the factory profit to be 40,000. So similarly, we can still find 40,000 to be the unrealized profit. We can do the same maths for your closing inventory, which is 300,000 is X plus 20% of X. And we can find the cost to be 250,000. So if the cost is 250,000, the unrealized profit is still 50,000. Again, that's the same answer as we get if we use the first method, which is the equation. So both methods can be used to calculate the unrealized profit. And once we have this, we can adjust this in our income statement. So we have now solved this part over here. 
So even if we're giving inventories at the transfer price, we can still find the amount of unrealized profit included in them. Now, once we have identified the unrealized profit, what will happen in the income statement? All right, so in the income statement, we will now also include the element of unrealized profit. So we have already learned how to treat the factory profit, which goes as an income. Now, if your unrealized profit has increased, which means the closing inventory unrealized profit is greater than the opening inventory unrealized profit, which implies that your profit is overstated, you should write that down as an expense, as an increase in unrealized profit. And if the unrealized profit has decreased, which means your profit is understated, it will again go in the section of incomes and gains as decrease in unrealized profit. So if your unrealized profit has increased, treat that as an expense, remove it from the profit. And if your unrealized profit has decreased, add it as an income over here as decrease in unrealized profit. And remember, we will also include the factory profit element. All right, so that's how the income statement for a manufacturing firm will look like once the cost of goods sold have been treated at the transfer price, we need to adjust for factory profit and increase and decrease in unrealized profit. And to conclude this, we can also take a look at the unrealized profit account. Now your unrealized profit account should look like this. Since it's a provision account, just like a provision for depreciation or provision for doubtful debt, which is a contra asset, it will start off with the credit balance. So the opening unrealized profit will have a credit balance brought down and the closing unrealized profit will have a balance CD on the debit side. Now, if your unrealized profit has increased, so you should show an income statement figure that should go as an expense. And if your unrealized profit has decreased, it will come on the debit side over here. All right, so you have to compare this to the opening and closing balance, something similar to provision for doubtful debt. If you guys remember, even for provision for doubtful debt, your increase in provision for doubtful debt would go as an expense and decrease in provision for doubtful debt, which, which will go as an income. So you guys should also know how to draw the provision for unrealized profit account and also how to calculate the amount of unrealized profit included in inventories.